Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. The last uh, couple of hours I've been fixing up some of the problems I was having with, I was talking about with LTN from before. So that's included setting up all of these filter inserters so that they will only unload the correct thing for that uh, that particular station. And these are now all, all set up everywhere. Some of, the, some of the output stations are set up like that as well. So in theory I could have a train trundle in here with a mixture of all of the different ores in it and it would only unload the copper ore into this station. It's getting destroyed. I should probably look at that at some point, um, but not right now. Anyway, this should um, this this in fact it does fix the problem of the trains dropping off the wrong supplies at the wrong station. So this is now, um, no, as I said, no matter what the uh, train has in it when it pulls in here, it will only drop off the copper ore. Um, that said, there's still a few problems here. Like I, I seem to have had some iron in these um, in these smelting machines from from before, so I'm going to need to go in and fix that up and make sure everything's just working as it should. Um, but mostly that is sort of okay now. There's another, um, so, so what, what that means is if, if a train does pull in with the wrong stuff in it, I get a little alert down here from um, from LTM, but that's very brief and very easy to miss. And then you end up with a train sitting in here with some junk in it, which just means when next time when it picks up a, a load from, from another station to, to take somewhere, it's not gonna be able to pick up as much as it should. So in order to help me um, actually notice that that's happened, I've wired together all of the stations like this, as you can see, with this uh, red wire running down between them. And this is separate to the one that runs to the uh, combinator here. So the, these are completely separate. That that one get, that one's connected to the light, which is the inputs for LTN, and then this one is connected to the actual stations, which you can then configure by clicking on the station to um, to, set, to to read the train contents. You can also have it send the contents of the um, of the network to the train and have the train trigger on on uh, network events. But I'm not using that. I'm just using I'm just pulling the uh, the contents the read train contents from these. That's then linked up to this speaker down here, hidden, tucked away behind this train here, <laughs> and that's set so that um, if any of the signals are greater than zero, then it'll sound an alarm. So as a demonstration, if I take something random out of my inventory like these inserters put them in that train, the alarm sounds. I also get a flashing symbol on the map here and an alert down here at the bottom of the screen so that I know where it's, so that I know what it is, where it's happened. You can set up alerts for all kinds of different things. I could use, I could potentially use this to have alarms go off every time one of my uh, outposts runs out of power, for example. I'm not going to do that because none of them have enough power and it, they'd probably just be sounding all the time. <laughs> um, Actually, no, I couldn't do that because when they haven't got power, the speakers don't work, so <laughs> it wouldn't work. Uh, but, in th but I could do it if they're running low on power or something like that. But anyway, so that will sound an alert every time um, a train comes in with with some stuff in it, and then I can either put the train into uh, just t turn the train um, in over into manual mode, so it just sits there and waits for me to go over and fix it, or alternatively, if, if it's just if there's only one thing in there and I, I can identify what it is, then I could just send it over to sit at that station and wait for a while. So, that's uh, one of the one of the things I've just done. I've also finally um, built up some blue circuit um, creation over here. We've got um, at least when there's enough copper, which there doesn't seem to be. I'm going to need to go and fix the uh, copper supplies in general. Uh, but we've got all these machines across the bottom here. Make if I can get the zoom level right. There we go. All of these making um, green circuits to go up to, to feed these blue circuit machines here, and are these this one over here making the red circuits. That's basically working but again I, I can't do math so I can't read numbers where I um, I managed to let's look in the right place I managed to forget that uh, this is two red circuits per um, uh, blue circuit rather than one so these are all nicely balanced we've got um, it turns out these can make uh, one stone one green circuit every half a second these require 20 every 10 seconds so one green circuit machine can keep one blue circuit machine supplied so over here where it's running flat out oh no there's the, the, the copper problem over here but when it when it is when there's when there's enough supplies of everything and it's running flat out these are making 20 circuits per 10 seconds each and these are taking 20 per, per circuits per 10 seconds each so that that is nicely balanced unfortunately the red circuits um it takes six seconds to produce one uh so you need uh, maths numbers. Uh, you basically, you need twice as many as this. So I reckon eight, 18 was going to be enough. So this, this would, these six machines would be using uh, 12 every 20 seconds, and these machines are making 
six every 20 seconds so I need I need I actually need to have two of these uh, banks so it's gonna be slightly tricky to squeeze in another one um, it might just about fit in here maybe I can nudge this uh, sulfuric acid production across a little bit to the uh, to the right to give it give it a little bit more space um, that's a bit of a pain because I was hoping that it would just fit all fit in quite nicely and it, it, it hasn't as well as I hoped but it's almost okay <laughs> Let's finish that belt off uh, but in general, I've got down here. I've got the um, the various stations bringing in the inputs. It's just we're not we don't have enough copper coming in because copper seems to be in short supply at the moment. Um, so yeah, we've got um, blue circuits. Blue circuits are being produced. Um, I've got one, two, six, twelve, twenty-four, so, and it takes ten seconds. I've been making two point four blue circuits per second, which isn't a huge number, and is why I've only got. Um, I've got 7.2 thousand, that's not too bad. It's been running for a little while now, but it's still a lot slower than I, I want it to be. Um, adding in the other bank of red circuits here will bring it up to the actual 2.4 circuits. I'm going to have to wait and see how it goes. If, if necessary, I can always build up another copy of it here and, and just have two, two identical systems running. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Because I've got that up and running now, I'm also uh, delivering all of the... Um, circuits to, uh, onto the bus here so I've ripped up the um, the green circuit production that was here well nearly all of it let's um, just finish that off there we go don't need any of that now this is where the, uh, the, the original green circuit production on the bus was so I'd, um, now I'm bringing it in by train at a sort of much higher in, in much higher quantities I don't I don't need to be building it here same goes for over here where the red circuits were being made um, I've cut off the the inputs for the uh, copper and the plastic and the, and the green circuits so the the hope was that it would just sort of tick away until it, and, and use up most of this these resources so I don't end up just dumping it into my logistics storage when I when I rip it up it's also not in the way of anything so I haven't just haven't removed it yet I did put in a couple of extra belts as well so the uh, that's got the red belt here to bring it along to, to merge them in here where they're where they're, as they're needed there's another belt here, this one, which I need to put some underground belts in along here, actually. I must, must forget to do that. But that's to bring the blue circuit up to all the way up here where they might get used. And another belt going the other way, which is to bring the more advanced science packs down and bring them to the uh, research area down here. So again, that's not finished yet, but it's um, it's well underway. And so the next thing is just to build the uh, build up the everything to build the circuits. Uh, no, the science packs. <coughs> I've also designed this uh, unloading system for the stations, which I'm I'm actually quite pleased with. One of the problems I've run, been running into in a lot of places, like if we look over here, no, this isn't this isn't a good example. There are a lot of, yeah, this this is this is a good example. Actually, no, let's try over. Is there is is, is there any copper left? No, none at all. Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at that st uh, st stone production. So what we've got here is these these four belts are being merged together, but th there's more stone being taken from the top side than the bottom side. So that so these two chests have run out already, and it's so it's just these two un un unloading, and it's so it's only using one side of the belt, and that's a fairly common problem with this sort of unloading system because it's a bit it is a bit rubbish, I have to admit, but I was being kind of lazy when I set it up, and it's assuming there's a full load on the on the on the on the bar, on the belt and it's taking all of the resources then it will unload evenly but if, if there isn't then it'll unload every other chest like like it's doing uh, wherever it was I know we've run out completely there now um, so you end up with it just on one side so what I've done over here is I've got belt side balances in here so we're we're unloading both onto this, onto it like this and then and then making sure there's both sides coming through and then merging them together um, one pair there, another pair there, and a third pair here, and then doing a three to two balancer in here, and that make makes sure that all of them should unload at the same at the same rate and un unload evenly. Uh, and this this is good for up to two two belts worth of output. So in this case, it should it, that should should be absolutely fine. Um, but what I'm quite pleased about with this is how is that I've managed to cram it into a, a space that's only what four squares high after the um, the basic unloading part, so the entire station can fit into this into this relatively small area. Uh, why are there some miners lying around on the floor? Let's get rid of those. I assume I came in there and just removed them by hand when my inventory was full. So yeah, this this I am I am quite pleased with it. It's it's, it's neat and compact and just and uh, means I can fit a lot of, can fit the stations reasonably close together while still keeping a, a balanced output as long as I only as long as I only need one or two belts worth. 
For other places where I need a bit more, I'm going to have to stick with this sort of thing. <clears throat> it doesn't balance per side, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, oh one of my trains has um, screwed up on the LTN thing. This is going, this is going to be um, demonstrate what I was talking about earlier. Where is it? Is that one? So, one of my trains, according to that alert, has left a station with a mixture of stuff in it. Um, the alert popped up a bit too quickly, and or went away a bit too quickly, so I didn't see what it was actually saying. But because all of the unloading stations are filtered, there's no risk of it actually unloading the wrong thing. It's just going to not quite take as much as it was supposed to to that station. Um, I don't know where it's gone. I, I say I didn't see where that alert popped up for. And there don't seem to be any trains running. Oh, and I'm getting stuff destroyed as well. Uh. Okay, so we've got the um, the bots coming in to do the, do the repairs. Well, they do, yeah, they're doing the rebuilding as well. Let's um, stick some extra turrets in here because that was obviously not enough. None of these trains seem to have pro problems with their. Stop destroying my stuff! Um, right. No, yeah, none of these trains seem to have any rubbish in them, so I'm not sure what that what that alert was. I'll have to um, have to uh, keep an eye out for it popping up again. What was I saying? So yes, on the bigger stations where we're using actually using all six belts worth of output, I'm um, I'm trying to I'm using the balancers like the, this sort of balancer as well, and to an extent I'm using the individual belt side balancers like this. Um, there wasn't there isn't room on this on these these belts unfortunately due to the way I've designed it. Um, so it's not uh, not ideal. Yeah, here we go. This is the sort of thing I was talking about. These these three have, uh, have still got bricks left, and this um, whereas these three haven't. So this side of the belt isn't getting any of the uh, any of the bricks flowing through, which is not a serious problem with that one in particular because they um, the bricks get used up quite slowly. But if but for the uh, for copper where it's get where we are in theory using the entire belt up, it is a bit more of a problem. Right, okay, I've talked about trains and unloading them for um, a good ten minutes now, maybe a bit more. Uh, I think that's probably enough for this episode. So, as I was saying, I, my, my um, progress this time is that I've, I've built up the uh, the blue uh, blue circuit production facility here and got the LTN working nicely again. Uh, I need to put in another column of these because I still can't do maths. Or at least can't read basic numbers. The next thing to do is to put in the science up here to do uh, yellow and purple science. Get them going, running down this uh, belt over here and, and off, the, off, off downwards. And that, then I can have artillery, and then I can start um, actually taking over territory a bit more effectively. Um, and also the the blue science, uh, well, sorry, blue circuits will allow me to start developing the um, planetary shield thing wherever that is. This one, yes, this one, the umbrella. So. That takes a massive quantity of ingredients, but will defend the entire planet. So that's that, that, that's okay. It's not it's not an enormous amount of stuff. Um, I can just pull it all off the bus. That's going to be relatively easy, and hopefully that'll defend that. So that'll defend against the um, energy problems. Meteors are going to still have to do um, with something else. So that's these ones, but these again will protect the entire planet. Um, and again, takes a lot of blue circuits to build, and then green circuits for the ammunition. But those are again things I have in in, uh, in a plentiful supply now. So th th those are going to be my next few projects. I did have a look after the um, excitement of the last episode. The next uh, coronal mass ejection isn't even heading for this planet, and is 10 hours off. So I've got plenty of time before I have to worry about that. Maybe that's a sort of an objective. I want to try and be on um, Kalidus uh, by the time the by the time it hits 10 hours off. That might be possible. Um, Oh, okay. Kalidus is the is the star. Hmm. But I think the orbit means it's just going to hit things that are in. It definitely said now Norvis in there before, so I don't know whether that means it's not going to hit here, or that it's just going to hit everything that's orbiting Kalidus. I guess we'll find out in ten hours. <laughs> um. Right. So. That is how things have been going so far. It's been um, all about trains this time and, and blue circuits. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.